I'm Lisa Holbrook. Coming up in sports, the Avs are playing game two in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Just how wild are things getting this time? The Nuggets aren't dwelling on the fact that they're winless against the Lakers this season. The bench is playing better now. The team is playing better now. And maybe most important, there are some veterans here who are running out of chances. Knows the dangers of playing an 0-3 team and wait till you hear about the dangers of being in the top five. I'm Lisa Holbrook coming up in sports. The Broncos trade is official. We'll tell you where Dominique's had a price. All the talk today is still about the Broncos' suddenly smackdown defense. And while we were marveling in the heroics, two key players on offense quietly went down. Mark, we're here with Champ. How disappointing is this after the great momentum you had coming off the Kansas City game where you just dominated on every side of the ball? Carmelo Anthony says he's a changed man. Kenyon Martin says he's never been happier. George Carl says he may get Get a lot tougher. What in the world has happened to our Nuggets? We figured this once proud rivalry would turn into a battle of bottom dwellers. To make things worse, the Raiders won up them this week, stunning the Broncos Sunday night while the Chiefs are crawling out of a winless November. They knew they could be walking into a trap. Who knew they were right? I'm Lisa Holbrook. Hi, and welcome to the Sports Replay. Brandon Marshall says he's embarrassed. The last time the Kansas City Chiefs won a game, October 21st, 2007. So with that, the Broncos lose their first September home game in six years. They'll go right back to work tomorrow looking for answers because it's a good bet. 14 points won't get it done next week at Indy. At Invesco, Lisa Holbrook, News 2 Sports. If this game wasn't painful enough, here we go again with Kmart. They're calling it torn cartilage in his right knee. Now, we didn't see this coming because they've been off for four days. He practiced yesterday, but we found out before the game a possible meniscus tear. Now, that's cartilage that's not supposed to be serious. They say anywhere from three to eight weeks, depending on the severity of the tear. Now, he was having an... So this one sent everyone scrambling for the record books. The verdict worst loss in the Shanahan era and you have to go back to 1966 to find anything quite this bad. They have two weeks to find their bootstraps. At Invesco, Lisa Holbrook, News 2 Sports. The Rockies finally made a move in the standings now seven games out and playing their best ball of the season. They'll have to keep winning without their closer for a while though. Brian Fuentes just went on bereavement leave. It would be up to the increasingly capable hands of Jorge De La Rosa to get the ball rolling in San Fran tonight, and he would have all the bat support he would need early. Garrett Atkins, this single's going to do some damage. Barmas and Holiday come home, and the Rockies take a 2-1 lead. The third inning hit fiesta continued. Thank you, Chris Ionetta. Rocks take a 4-1 lead and now are still in control. 4-2 heading into the fifth. We don't know if it'll make Babe Ruth turn over in his grave, but it's coming, like, immediately. Instant replay will start on Thursday, beginning with the game slated for that day. He's proven to be the unstoppable force on the Broncos' offense. Now we're this much closer to knowing how many games he's going to miss. Brandon Marshall was suspended three games by the league for his off-the-field troubles. He was excused from practice today so he could attend his appeal hearing in New York. Their number one receiver is trying to get his punishment reduced, and it will come down to two games if he complies with league guidelines during his suspension. The Broncos play their final preseason game Friday night in Arizona. While it's a meaningless spectacle for most, not so much for one Bronco in particular, who's looking at the biggest game of his life. Paul Boron has the story. Thanks, Paul. The big clash on the front range is Sunday night at Invesco for CU, year three of the Dan Hawkins era. Improvement last year, even higher expectations this year. A more experienced Cody, a blue chip running back, and yet another year of buying into the Hawk formula that moved mountains in Boise. The Buffs won the showdown last year in a cliffhanger. All systems go in Boulder right now. And finally, how about a nine-year-old pitcher banned from Little League, his only crime? Being too good. Team stopped showing up to play the willpower fitness team when Jericho Scott pitched. So finally, league officials kicked the team out for the rest of the season, claiming parents were afraid of the way Jericho pitches. He does bring 40 mile an hour heat, but also has pinpoint control, and he's never hit anyone. He was also leading his team to an undefeated season. No comment from the league, who wasn't returning phone calls. Jericho's being robbed. Time to head back to Ernie and Kelly now at Pepsi Center. Hey, guys.
Luke Snyder, it started with horses. His mom wouldn't let him play Pop Warner football, so he turned to this. He's ready for this. He's waiting for his whole life. After a trip to the American Royal when he was eight, young Luke was hooked. He just won the Professional Bull Riders World Championship in his first year of competition and picked up Rookie of the Year honors all before he can legally buy beer. There's no feeling in the world that can take its place when 17,000 people stand on their feet for you after you just conquered a, you know, a beast that doesn't weigh you on his back. So Let's get back to that. A 2,000-pound beast, the likes of which have killed and paralyzed the most experienced of riders. If anybody that rides bulls tell you ain't scared, they're either just playing crazy or lying to you because every time I get on, I'm scared, but it's just how you control your fear. You just turn into positive energy and go with it. And there is a sweet spot you can get in, and eight seconds can be long. Or eight seconds can be short. There's a saying is don't quit till your head hits the ground twice. So. And Luke's eight seconds of perfection have turned into 15 minutes of overnight fame. I got a lot of phone calls, you know. I've been getting some phone calls from relatives I didn't even know I had and friends I didn't know I had. <laughs> To that, a call from a rap star named Master P, who wanted Luke to be part of his latest video. I'm about to show Master P, I'm proud about it. Make him say, oh! Just like that, that's it. Not bad for a kid who went to Ray Peck High School, but it hasn't come easy. Luke spent every weekend on the rodeo circuit since he was a kid. So, so we are kind of under the impression that risk is the spice of life, that uh, without it, everything's just kind of dull. And so, no, he, he hasn't missed out on anything. If, if anything, he's, he's seen more than any 19-year-old that I know. And Luke isn't finished. He's already back at work with his eye on the ultimate prize, the World Championship, a foregone conclusion to those who know him. In Raymore with photographer Dale Messing, Lisa Holbrook, NBC 41 Sports.